It's good to know that you are there. This is the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria ACNN and you are on to the news on the R. I am Zubechi Frank. You are welcome. Ahead of the 2019 general election and as part of the Diocese of Abuja 2018 Carnival for Christ celebrations, the Chairman Central Planning Committee, Venerable Serenius Okoriko, has reiterated the need for Christians to be actively involved in politics. He made this known while delivering his welcome address at the symposium which took place at the Basilica of Grace Church Kudu District Abuja Anglican Communion with the theme Christians in Politics. According to him, God is interested in what we do both spiritually and physically and that was why God instructed that Christians must be involved in politics for effective governance. Let me state that the God we serve is a God who cares about our spiritual lives. He also cares about the food we take, the road that we follow, the jobs that we have, and even everything about the social life. God is very interested. So therefore, the Bible instructs us to get involved. The Bible is full of the account of Christian characters who are deeply involved in governance of their day. You remember people like who? Joseph, people like Daniel, people like Esther, to mention but a few in the Bible. And also in the New Testament, in Romans 13, we were told that we must support those who are in authority, we must pray for them so that they can do well for the benefit of all. So effective government is by vital in the pursuit of justice. If there must be justice, there must be an effective government. Meanwhile, the Bishop of Abuja Diocese and Primate of All Nigeria Anglican Communion is graced Most Reverend Nicholas D. Oko while delivering his keynote speech at the event defined politics as a social science that affects every aspect of one's life. Politics, as uh, we all know, is a social science. It has to do with our everyday life. The origin of modern democratic politics. And so, it's a good thing for us to exercise ourselves, even though. We are not men and women of high-sounding names in politics, but within the limit of our ignorance, we can discuss as it affects us, because whether we like it or not, we are part of it. Politics is very important, very, very important. It affects old man, an old man, an old woman, it affects a young man, a young woman. It affects those who are not yet even born. It's as important as that. It affects the food you eat, the water you drink, the electricity that comes to your home, and so on. So, it's only people who decide to close their eyes and walk blindly that will say that politics does not matter. Also, while fielding questions from journalists, the primate revealed what the church tends to achieve from the program. In a way, the scope of the topic is um, limited. As you can see, it said Christians and politics. This is because over the years, a particular type of uh, puritanic group within the church tend to believe that politics is so dirty that they have nothing to do with it. And so, on the day of election, not even up to the day of election, they will not bother to register. They will not bother to take part in, the, uh, in um, joining parties. They will not bother to vote, and so and so forth. And all they will say is, uh, let us pray and so on and so forth. 
So we want to encourage people to come into politics with their nobility or ideas of nobility, ideas of uh, goodness, ideas of righteousness, ideas of holiness, ideas of purity, so that these things can become the detergent to wash politics and wash it clean. Hopefully, up to a standard that will be acceptable by the international community. So that is why we are organizing it to educate our people that the time for this puritanic behavior is over. They should come in and not stay by the outside to be practicing their purity. They should come into it, into politics, and practice it. God is not a man that he should lie. The vicar of St. Matthew's Anglican Church, Meitama Abuja, Venerable Oludare Otoki, affirmed to this statement why plain guest preacher at the general harvest of the Old Saints Anglican Church who says on 5 Abuja. Speaking on the theme of the harvest, which is harvest of restoration, Venerable Otoki noted that God has promised to restore to his children whatever they may have lost. He said restoration implies that something good has been lost, but that God is willing to restore. And because he is not a man that he should lie, his promises remain dependable and reliable. Meanwhile, speaking in an interview, the vicar of the All Saints Anglican Church, who says on 5 Abuja, Venerable Ernest Onwaha, gave insight to the theme of the harvest and what Christians must do to make sure that the process of restoration remains permanent. We thank God in the first place for the theme of restoration. You know, restoration is to re establish to former state, former condition, that which was lost. And as a part of promise by God in Joel 2, 25 to 27, everything eaten off by the locusts, canker worm, the swarming locusts, the Lord promises to restore unto his people, which means in every dimension of one's life, whether health, whether his, his or her marriage, in academics or working place, the promise of God is sure. He will restore and then move the person to the level and the condition he wants him or her to be. This is what we are celebrating today. In our harvest, giving thanks to God with joyfulness in our heart because God is going to bring back all that we have lost within the year as a nation, as a church, and as an individual. And then for us to make it permanent, we really need to ask God. Because we need to ask Him in prayer. In Matthew 7, 7, He says, Ask, you will receive. Seek, you shall find. And knock, the door shall be opened unto you. When you ask God, when you diligently, sincerely, earnestly, conscientiously ask Him in prayer, God will make it permanent and that is what I advise Christians all over the world, Christians in Nigeria, worshippers in all sense to ensure that they ask God, the God of restoration, so that he will restore to them what he has promised to do, especially in this season at this time. The Harvest Committee Chairman, who is also the President of the Vika Society, Sir Engineer Umona Ekenna, with some church members, also gave gratitude to God for a successful general harvest and also shared reasons for the outfits of the day. I thank God for everything. I thank God for life. I thank God for the opportunity. I thank God for bringing us safely to this day. Today is not really the end of the harvest, but today is the general harvest. The family harvest continues and we hope a lot of people who had not availed themselves the opportunity to thank God for his, his uh, blessings towards us all will have opportunity.
opportunity to thank God as a family, as an individual, before the year runs out. We all look forward to today's general harvest, the perfect of the bread. And you can see, for me, I am the happiest person. I'm sure you saw me dancing all through. And I know I have been restored. They say for restoration to remain permanent in our lives, we must shun sin. God hates sin. S I N. Yes, God hates sin. Today you can see we all dress gorgeous according to our different traditions. You see the rivers of the south, south, you see the south east, you see the southwest. You know, we're all dancing to the glory of God. And the Lord put himself mighty we are happy. And I pray that that happiness will remain permanent in our lives in the name of Jesus. Like what inspired my dressing was that we said we should wear our cultural clothes and this is my cultural clothes and also I am proud to be part of this this state that I am from. The new GAFCON General Secretary, the most reverend Benjamin Kwashi, has raised an alarm warning Christians of alleged escalating attacks by Islamist militants in the lead up to next year's general election and also called on the Nigerian government to provide security for Christian farmers in the north who are being killed and driven from their homes by heavily armed Fulani headsmen. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi, who is also the Bishop of Just Diocese, raised this alarm while on a speaking tour at a UK-based Release International, which supports persecuted Christians around the world. The Archbishop, who suffered three assassination attempts, also criticized inaccurate reporting for paralyzing the will to intervene to prevent the Fulani attacks. According to the clergyman, it is a situation of fear and most Christians fear the attack will get worse in the coming general election next year. Many Christians, especially in the north, are afraid they might get wept out. The activities of some ungodly persons whose conscience is dead against the Church of God, especially our church fathers, by act of impersonation, fraud and scamming has necessitated this notice to the public in order to inform kind-spirited and philanthropic individuals and organizations from falling prey to their evil practices. Please be informed that our fathers in God, the primate, the dean, the archbishop and the bishops of the Church of Nigeria will not demand funds from anyone in ways that are ungodly. The public kind-spirited and philanthropic individuals and organizations are advised to cross-check such demands for funds that are purportedly from the Church of Nigeria. Our primate, his wife, the dean of the Church of Nigeria, or any of our archbishops and bishops before going ahead to send such funds as demanded. The Church of Nigeria continues to appreciate the corporate goodwill it is enjoying with everyone and would not want it to be taken advantage of by impostors and fraudsters. We shall now go on a short commercial break. News on the hour continues in a moment. Please stay with us. It's the 2018 Carnival for Jesus Christ. Come, let's celebrate our Lord Jesus in activities that begin at 10 p.m. On Friday, 23rd November, in fervent prayers with Power Night at St. Matthew's Church, Maitama, and end with a Thanksgiving service on Sunday, 2nd December, at the Cathedral Church of the Advent, Guarimpa. The Carnival Week activities will feature our talented young ones on Sunday, 25th November, as they make known their knowledge of the scriptures in the Bible quiz at St. Matthew's Church, Guarimpa. Evangelism Symposium on Christians and politics followed by revivals on the topic for by strength will no man prevail will culminate in the celebration of the carnival day proper in colorful floats songs dance much past an exhortation on the theme god our refuge and help at the old parade ground saturday 1st december at 9 a.m come it's the carnival for christ host his grace the most reverend nicholas oko metropolitan and primate of all nigeria anglican communion you are welcome back and thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. To be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store.
The Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, has accused the federal government of politicizing the negotiation for the new proposed 30,000 Naira minimum wage for workers. This was as the national president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba, alleged that the federal government was playing double standard in the negotiation. He spoke during the 2018 Joint National Public Service Negotiating Council meeting in Yenegua. By State. Waba also commended the private sectors for supporting labor on improving the workers' well being. The national president of the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees, Comrade Ibrahim Khalid, had said despite having the lowest staff strength in terms of local government area workers, local government workers in Plateau State are the least paid workers in the country. He also revealed that the state is only behind Zamfara State as the second least paid. Khalid stated this during the union's 40th anniversary celebration in Jos, represented by the National Auditor of Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees. Khalid lamented that 40 years down the line, the conditions of civil servants is nothing to write home about, as many are languishing in abject poverty. Four kidnapped victims have been rescued by men of the anti-kidnapping unit of the River State Police Command. The victims, who are lecturers, were said to be returning to Port Harcourt from Abia State when they were ambushed around Imu River by unknown gunmen along the Port Harcourt Aba Expressway. Briefing newsmen at the command's headquarters in Moscow Road, the command spokesman Namdi Omoni said the victims were rescued in a forest in Obibi community, a shared local government area of the state. Omoni, our deputy superintendent of police, said the rescue operation was led by men of the commander of the anti-kidnapping unit, CSP Edward Shadari. He added that two of the kidnappers were fatally wounded during a gun duel with the police. According to him, it was a breakthrough for the force because those boys have been terrorizing the axis of Abarut. And now to foreign news. The Anglican Church of the Redeemer Regina in Canada have launched a new non-profit group designed to help African Anglican immigrants migrating to Regina, Canada. The leader of the Anglican Church of the Redeemer Regina in Canada, Venerable K. Adebogun, says the group mission is to help settle African immigrants to Regina and surrounding areas. They said they will provide free airport pickup, free need-based temporary housing and shelter, free jump hunting services for Anglican immigrants to Regina, among others. This group will also partner with other Anglican immigrants group to help Anglicans relocate into Canada. U.S. President Donald Trump has said he may cancel a long-awaited summit with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin after a confrontation at sea between Russia and the Ukraine-led Kiev to one of the threats of full-scale war. Trump is scheduled to meet Putin at the G20 summit in Buenos Aires at the end of this week, but warned that it would depend on the results of a report being prepared by his national security advisers about Russia's seizure of three Ukrainian ships. According to Ukrainian's president, Petro Poroshenko, the standoff could earlier hurt more drastic development as tensions escalate between the ex-Soviet neighbors as Ukraine is on the threat of full-scale war with Russia. A court in Simferopol, the city in Russian annexed Crimea, has ordered 12 of the sailors to be held in pre-trial detention for two months as three hospitalized sailors were also formally detained for two months and the rest are to appear in court. The U.S. State Department has termed Russia's action a dangerous escalation and said Washington wants to see European allies doing more to assist Ukraine. 
Meanwhile, the incident has raised fears of a wider escalation in a conflict that has killed more than 10,000 people since 2014 that prompted international calls for restraint. So that's it on this edition of the News on the R. We want to thank you for watching. I am Zubechi Frank.